the movie starts with a scene of a guy talking to a woman. He is Monty Brewster, a minor league baseball pitcher for the local Hackensack Bulls team of the Atlantic League of Professional Baseball. In the next scene of the movie, after a post-game bar brawl, he and his best buddy, Bulls catcher Spike Nolan, are both arrested and charged with assault. If they agree to accompany him to New York City, a guy promises to post their bail for them. Then, Brewster is informed at the Manhattan legal firm of Granville and Baxter that his recently deceased great-uncle Rupert Horn, whom he has never seen, has given him his whole $300 million inheritance, but only if he can complete a challenge that includes numerous requirements. Then, he has the option of receiving $1 million up front or attempting to inherit the entire fortune by spending $30 million in the span of 30 days. In the first instance, the legal firm serves as the executor of the estate, collecting a fee for providing this job and dividing the remaining funds among many charitable organizations. Brewster may not be in possession of any assets that are not already his at the end of the 30-day period in the latter circumstance. He must get fair compensation for the work of anybody he employs, he may contribute 5% of his earnings to charity and lose 5% of his earnings via gaming. He may not throw any of his earnings away, and he may not squander any of his earnings by acquiring and destroying valuable items. Finally, he is not permitted to inform anybody, including Spike. Moreover, if he does not spend the whole $30 million, he forfeits any leftover balance and does not get any inheritance. The $30 million challenge is accepted by Brewster, who is accompanied by Angela Drake, a paralegal from the law firm, who is tasked with keeping track of his expenditures. It is revealed in one of the film's jokes that a clone of the famed Inverted Jenny has been created. Brewster, who has never made more than $11,000 per year, leases a luxurious hotel suite at the Plaza Hotel, employs personal assistants at excessive rates, and lays erroneous gambling wagers to supplement his income. Spike, on the other hand, makes wise investments that bring Brewster money. As a result of his frustration with his lack of progress, Brewster decides to run for mayor of New York City and spends the majority of his funds on a protest campaign pushing voters to vote for none of the above. They both threaten to sue Brewster for his hostile speech, but they ultimately agree to settle out of court for a sum in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. In the next week, Brewster hires the New York Yankees for a three-inning exhibition game against the Chicago Bulls, in which he will serve as the pitcher. In the course of his protest campaign, he discovers that he is in the lead in the polls as a write-in candidate. The post entails a salary of $60,000 per year, which is deemed an asset under the conditions of the will, and he is obliged to abandon it. After blowing his final $38,000 on a party following the game, Brewster gets disillusioned with money and is devastated that Spike, Angela, and the rest of his friends do not understand what he is going through with his life. During the penultimate day, he discovers that the adoring treatment he had gotten from his entourage had been discontinued. Brewster is shunned by everyone he knows as he makes his way to the attorney's office. As a result of his withdrawal from the race, he finds that the city has chosen none of the above, requiring him to contest a new election in which none of the prior candidates would be competing. Apparently, the legal firm has paid Warren Cox, a young lawyer at the firm who also happens to be Angela's fiancé, in order to prevent Brewster from spending the full $30 million. In the nick of time before the clock strikes 12, Cox delivers Brewster some money that he had previously assumed had been spent and assures him that he is not in debt. Angela learns about the scheme shortly before Brewster signs the document and informs him of it. In response to Brewster's punch, Cox threatens to sue and rejects Brewster's offer of money as restitution. Brewster recognizes that he will want the services of an attorney and provides the money to Angela as a retainer. Brewster has fulfilled the provisions of the will by completing the deal and disposing of all of the money. He at the end of movie then receives the whole $300 million inheritance and movie ends at this scene.